This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Welcome back to the Graveyard Club podcast. Today we're talking about Possession from 1981. As you know, for season two, we're taking turns picking films, so this is Steve's pick. So give it a listen. Possession. Here we go. This is your pick this week, Dick? Yeah. What a pick. What a pick. What a heavy hair. And like the last one, like uh, Freaks, this is actually considered a cult classic. Am I right? 100%. It's very underrated. It's um, very under misunderstood as well. Underappreciated, maybe? Underappreciated as well. 100% is called classic. It's Possession. It's 1991. It's Isabel and Janney. It was Anne and Sam Neill. Who's the director boy? Characters. Um, oh, God. Andre G. Sorry, we're going to be I think it's Andre Zutas to. Zutowski. We're going to be butchered Zutowski, a couple of names that's this butchered. podcast. Absolutely butchered. And then we have Heinz Bennett, who plays Heinrich, who is another kind of main character. And then we also have a little kid called Bob, who we don't know who the mm. actor is really. Well, it doesn't really matter. I find this movie very mysterious, Dave, so do you want to tell it's us a little... It's extremely confusing. little background before we get into the plot. Um, basically, it's a... It's called Possession, aka it's about possession, but it's not really about possession, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> in short words. Yeah. It's about oh, heavy on the what life is like in Berlin after the war. So yeah, um, oh, it was the filmed divide in, between uh, It was filmed in West Berlin, wasn't it? Film in West Berlin, um the divide between East and West Berlin is heavy in this and it's like it's just the uh, you know you see the wall you see the soldiers all that stuff I so find that very interesting it is it's very interesting and you see a lot of the same shots like the set, like in their apartment outside the window is directly they're looking directly at the wall with the soldiers so like they never kind of get away from it yeah you know but yeah like and it's grey and it's like a lot of blues dark colours it's kind of depressing as well it's a lot of heavy topics there's miscarriage there's I'm gonna say child abuse, neglect because you know. Hundred percent, poor Bob. Yeah. Rape. Um, it's full abuse, blown. Abuse, domestic abuse, cheating. Oh, there's a lot in it, isn't there? And exactly, and this yeah, is probably why it was, it was banned for years. It, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, apparently it was banned for years. Like, as but a lot of good films were banned for years, so that doesn't turn me off. If yeah, I hear that, no. I'm like, it's a good one. Exactly, and like you said, it's after building a cult. Uh, following yeah. over the years and people regard it now yeah. it's in like the 250 list of most watched horror films and all. but it is like it's heavy and I mean the actress who plays Anna Isabel and Johnny, I think it took it definitely took a toll on her I think there was an interview where she said that it took her years to get over yeah and she'd never play another role like that ever again I mean and she plays an absolute blinder in this film oh fucking brilliant she yeah. plays two like massively separate people mm. really really good Although, I don't know, is she, is she, does she have like a French accent? I think she is French. Is she French? I think she is, yeah. I think she was a French uh, actress, yes. I love the fact that. Sure. But if you're so, if you're listening to us, uh, if you remember the first Omen review that me and Dee done, mm-hmm. uh, there's a scene from that film that's taken out of this film. Like, so we'll, yeah. get, we'll get into it, like, we'll get into the plot. Oh, okay, so you're but, right. Yeah, very enjoyable film before we get in and... It's very enjoyable. It's one of those you're going to have to watch maybe twice, if not three times. Um, Which we did, I think. We had to yeah, watch it about three times. I think anyway, the first time around. Like, you're not going to get the first time won't. around. It's, you're going to maybe watch it and be like, what the actual yeah. f- am I watching? like, mm. Or what was that? But let it sit on you. Rewatch it. Every time you watch it, you're going to notice something different. But it's an absolute blinder. It's so underappreciated for the time. And the main actors I have to just say mm. I ha- and I have 10 to out of 10 see these picks 
the looks of Suspiria and and this Rosemary's one Baby, Rosemary's Baby um, you'll come to seeing this season seeing a lot of these picks she has some great taste I have a lot of twisted you know I mean? dark taste but this is one of mine if you want to get to know me watch Possession and we'll talk about it after because yeah. I want to see what come back here you and listen pick to this. Out. so basically I don't want to tell you my interpretation of the film I'm just going to tell what happens more or less what happens just to give you a flavour of it but I do think like I said you have to go and watch it if not two or three times but Agreed. more or less the two main stars it's a couple kind of the main gist is we're getting it's a marriage breakdown we're heading towards divorce which is not a taboo topic that's in a lot of films basically Mark is a spy um, they're in Berlin as I said the divide between East and West Berlin is rife um, the economy it's a lot of dark scenes there's a lot of dark colours it's very grey a lot of shots of the Berlin Wall the soldiers yada yada probably exactly the way it looked back then exactly the way it would look mm. very industrial um, not a lot of people on the street interesting very interesting very yeah interesting, maybe not yeah. a nice place to live though love the set of it love the set for other people so that's the gist so Mark's a spy you see him kind of have this interaction with his um, employers at the start and he doesn't look too happy you kind of get the gist that like look the job's not great obviously they're in Berlin um, Mark is English as far as I know or he is in this film so and his wife is I think she's meant to be German and they have a little kid called Bob so he comes home from some time away and the apartment that they live in is an absolute derelict like there's crap everywhere the child is like I think he's naked he's dirty he's the house is all trashed the house is trashed it looks like there hasn't been anyone there for months um, and the child is like extremely <laughs> malnourished it's a straight way opens dark so like, Anna, you know Anna's been gone like. um, so we're like where the fuck is the wife Anna so Mark doesn't really do anything he kind of was like walks around and starts cleaning up and gives the little boy a bath and but, but makes him food but what we didn't say is when Mark comes back from a spy mission and is acting all weird well this is we haven't even met any of her oh right 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 so he just kind of carries on and starts bathing the boy and whatever like that next of all Anna kind of just rumbles in the door with two bags of shopping and personal glasses on and we're like what the fuck is going on here she doesn't even say anything she's just like putting stuff away he's in her face there's a lot of scenes in the kitchen the kitchen is a big part of this film a lot of ha shit happens in the kitchen between the couple so the fourth kind of scene in the kitchen is tension obviously she's like not saying anything really but you'll notice the dialogue in the film do not let it turn you off it's meant to be like this because it's meant to be very scarce dialogue and you're meant to just go off the emotions and, and it, um, it was weird wasn't it and it's very it was weird shot. and it's weird the way it's shot but just like watch it as if you're as if you're Mark and you're like what the fuck is going on here mm. like you're meant to be confused because I was like what is actually I think I paused at the first time I watched it and I was nearly getting annoyed at because mm. I was like I had no idea what's going on here and even why by is the end nobody of it, like... ringing the police but, or bringing the child to the hospital like it, it's not logical film at all so that's cool they kind of have like <laughs> I don't know a spat or whatever like that Um. so yeah and then he's like I think she kind of says in that scene she wants a divorce he starts questioning her, and questioning her about does she have a lover she gets all tick and flees again so Mark's left there with the kid whatever he brings the kid to school yada yada that's grand he gets a phone call or I think he's calling her friend looking for her then he gets a phone call off this guy called Heinrich and he is the sleaziest motherfucker you're ever going to meet in your whole life this fellow was something else he what, is like he? a German <laughs> um, sleazeball <laughs> I don't even know like hard to describe this fella but he was entertaining and just Timmy might have to stick a clip in <laughs> to show what he's like can we stick a clip in of yeah. Heinrich here we'll stick one right Heinrich's there. best bits I'm sorry I used violence with you and now I'd only employ my psychic functions to make it come to me <laughs> <laughs> okay there you go hopefully you get the vibe of what Heinrich is he's kind of oh, first of all I thought he was gay so he's like yes and it is I know did you think that or am I just <laughs> yeah I did as well yeah yeah but then like it was strange because he is a bit fruity very fruity yeah sorry yeah a little bit I fruity I just so wet the whistle there sorry about that guys <laughs> well, his, his name is Henrik wasn't it Henrik Henrik mm. and yeah so 
she's there's just a lot of random scenes then um and they're not they're important enough like but again the first time you watch it it's gonna be overwhelming so I so Mark s- finds out then that Mark is like okay who's a motherfucker Heinrich let's go over like that he heads over to Heinrich's place I don't know how he finds out I think the friend they have a mutual friend I can't remember her name um, and she's just trying to get in on Mark she's trying to get up on Mark yeah. so she's like they're getting a divorce grant she's ringing and she's like oh yeah she's having a, an affair he heads over to this Heinrich place he is like the I don't know fruity to he he kind of admits that they're having well he definitely admits that they're having an affair that he's a lover and all this stuff and I don't know if he's flirting with Mark he's just such a freak yeah um, again very weird again scenes. it's just such the scenes are just like what on earth is fucking happening and I'm not saying this in a bad way but, but no you really have to say it to believe it, to what we're talking genuinely about genuinely you're thinking what like what on earth is happening yeah. here it's just so bizarre so in the first scene that he's in Heinrich's house Heinrich's mom comes in she's like some decrepit little old woman who yeah. comes in with a little walker mid they're battering each other they're literally having like a scrap in the apartment she opens the door and they stop fighting it's just so weird but yeah so we're piecing the puzzle here together Anna is having an affair with Heinrich Mark finds out Anna wants a divorce things are breaking down in the marriage here it is not told very specifically like that you have to put that together so yeah that's it Um, so Mark's obviously slipping into kind of a bad state you kind of see again I just don't understand why Anna is leaving that child and nobody's saying anything or doing anything do you feel bad for Mark? 100% yeah I can't help myself but feel bad for Mark What's going on um, and he's not Poor perfect Mark. like there's a lot of domestic abuse um, there's a lot of self harm as well like yeah. as I said the scenes in the kitchen I don't want to talk too much about it because it's it what the electric spoiler, knife yeah spoiler not spoiler alert but like it is a heavy it, scene it's like you know you don't want to talk like I don't want to ruin too much of the film but like you need to watch it like there is a heavy as you so said so basically the, after sorry. Mark yeah I'll just say yeah. basically after Mark comes back from Heinrich he's like in a fucking fit of rage which he would be as well obviously um, and she's in the kitchen and she's like cutting meat with an electric knife and he, they come in he confronts her yada 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 she doesn't deny it obviously and they go at it but then she starts to cut her arm with this electric knife ah oh, it's just like oh, so much emotional things going on here mm yes it is a horror film but at those scenes it's like Jesus this is such like a heavy drama yeah, yeah. of like a marriage breakdown and mm. cheating and all that stuff like so after the heavy scene anyways Mark decides that it's time to get an investigator to follow Anna see where she's going um, all that stuff yada yada so we meet the investigator um, cannot remember his name for the life of me doesn't really matter though there's an investigator was it Zimmerman I think it was Zimmerman yeah I think it was Zimmerman I think it was Zimmerman yeah. so we watched the investigator follow on it and it looks like she has another apartment somewhere in Berlin in so, like a derelict kind of building though. in an even more derelict yeah, spot yeah. to them what we're used to so he's investigating her he's kind of following her he, she's going to the shop and she's buying groceries and you know you get a lot of a lot of lovely scenes in Berlin at the time a lot of the underground tunnels like that you know we've been to Berlin a few times the U-Bans yeah. yeah well not even the U-Bans but yeah some of the U-Bans as well yeah. Um, and he follows her to the apartment where she goes up and I think I don't think he goes into the apartment the first time he goes outside and he calls Mark and he's like oh so she's definitely the investigator doesn't, definitely doesn't go else. into the apartment. I'm not sure if he goes in the first time but I do remember there's a scene he comes outside and he calls Mark and he's like well look there's another apartment there's another so okay. they see him at this stage yeah there's another man yeah Um, but I think we see Heinrich again and Heinrich is like look it's not me that she moved in with this is mm. my apartment so he's like right there's a third person here so again oh Mark, yeah that's right because that's the that's when Mark and uh, your man have a fight remember yeah <laughs> they have a lot of fights like they have yeah. a lot of fights but and who won that did yeah, man, I think bit, bit the shit out of Mark, didn't oh, yeah, yeah, I think, I don't know. That Again, the film is just that. chaotic. It was a funny thing. <laughs> and also, I will say, it's very hard to tell you exactly how it happens in order because the like, pace of this film is so fast. Mm. There's no direct cut from scenes. It's just bang, bang, yeah, bang. You don't really get a chance to process well. anything. Either. No, you don't get a chance to process yeah. anything because it's already 100%. bang straight into the next scene. Um, and then there is a good couple of scenes of Mark having a breakdown and he kind of, I also was 
like not a feeling bad from at the start but he kind of leaves the kid to go to shit again and he's like leaving himself to go to shit the apartment is in the shit the kid is just so abused and neglected through all this I don't know <laughs> it's just heartbreaking like neither that, of them are good parents absolutely so it, it neither of them are good parents and sorry for them it like. is and the child is just left I don't even know yeah. like Poor it's Bobby, heartbreaking like, so I think he tries to scrape himself together and in fairness he scrapes himself together much more than Anna does at all in this film but we find out why soon so the investigator I think this is the kind of the next anchoring part that I can kind of pull you through in the yeah. film yeah. Um, the next part that you're going to get your head around is the investigator goes into the apartment and he pretends to be a inspector and he's like oh you know I have to do this inspection obviously he's trying to get some info Anna is just acting free. I think she cracks open a bottle of wine in this scene. Yeah, yeah. And she's talking. There's a lot of like poetic scenes where she's talking about like how would you say like she's not really making sense, but she is making sense at the end of the film. Yeah. But like talking you, like in metaphors. Yeah, almost, metaphorically and like all spiritual. And at the end of the film, you're like, oh, okay, that's what's was going on. But you're at that part you're like what the fuck is wrong with this person yeah, yeah. like you know um, he stumbles upon this room where I can only start to describe what is the gist of this film actually is about so there is a creature who is in a bed and there's tentacles all there's like, out throughout the apartment as well yeah so I'm gonna let that we're gonna maybe put in a few pictures here yeah I'll put even a clip in even a can. clip um <laughs> <laughs> little uh, trivia there the fella who helped design the alien uh, one of the alien scenes in the original alien film remember me and you watched it there just yeah like, uh, helped to do that uh, special I'm not effects. surprised because it was quite graphic quite bloody yeah. and it's like uh, first of all I thought it was like now what is this thing we don't really know I, I mean, thought it was a whim because mm. it was like bloody and all this stuff and then she was feeding it so I was like is she buying groceries and feeding this thing mm. and then we find out it's like this monster that she's been having sex with so just and there is, on that. there is a scene where we do see that as well where she has sex with the monster <laughs> which we're not going to add in obviously I but I couldn't I couldn't do that I no, could be no, a Patreon no. shit but like no not YouTube <laughs> oh no I wouldn't even you just have to go and watch this but um, this scene ties up with the investigator getting killed and I think she cracks a bottle of I think she cracks him in the head with the bottle of wine that she I think drinking. she breaks the bottle breaks the bottle of wine puts him in the head yeah. stabs him and then obviously that creature is gonna fucking Eat absorb or whatever yeah. he's in the corner then dead I think the tentacles move over to it or whatever mm. like that um, so yeah that's lovely <laughs> so I don't know how to even break down what the creature is if you watch YouTube videos of this film it's gonna go into all this crap and it's gonna say oh it's this like you know m demonic or you know Demon whatever or I'm just gonna look at the fact of it from a horror film and say it's the demon or monster monster in the film so you were calling it like an alien kind of thing but I think it's like it looked like an alien didn't it yeah, yeah. so I'm just gonna call that that's the demon that's possessing Anna so Anna is fully possessed at this point if you wanted to see it like that is she possessed with like depression is she possessed with mm. postnatal is she possessed I don't know but she's possessed with something so in the meantime the investigator he's obviously dead what happens now is between the scenes of Anna and Mark slowly slipping into absolute madness the investigator's lover is like where the fuck is um, yeah. I think it's Zimmerman or maybe the lover is called Zimmerman yeah, one I of them think, is yeah. called Zimmerman could be the um, lover actually did yeah yeah so he's like what the fuck he's like where is he he calls Mark and Mark is like look the last time I seen him he was investigating Anna and this apartment the lover goes to the apartment the same fucking shit happens to the lover she gives she's even more Fuck. strange yeah. in this yeah. scene when she's talking to him he sees his lover's body runs over um, and then she kills him then as well there's a lot of scenes where she's in the underground and she's having like this fucking literal panic attack almost possession scene and there's yeah. like stuff coming out of her with like milk and stuff and that was the scene that they copied in the first omen yes people copped onto that one like, by the way but yes like and so, it looks like she's taking a fit really but yeah 
And like there's oh, I don't scene. know But then there's a scene Where they're so normal And they're like In a cafe And they're yeah. Not sitting beside yeah, each yeah. other At the same table But yeah. they're sitting What the and then but again, people will tell you like, "Oh, this is a great um, depiction of the divide here. Why do we have to look into it like that? I don't know." But they just would not sit at the same table. They're like screaming at each other, but sitting side by side. It's so fucking weird. Mm. But obviously, it's shot like that to show the divide. La la la. Um, basically, Anna tells Mark that she had a miscarriage, and I don't think Mark even thinks it's his because she's been having affairs. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so. Mark teams up with Heinrich then they go to the apartment because they're both like I think Heinrich is like I want my lover back and Mark is like I don't give a fuck she's messed up you know whatever does like they go up to the apartment that weird ass thing is in the apartment there's body parts in the fridge the creature is there I think they get into like a whole it's actually disgusting looking um, at that scene uh, it's isn't it? just fucking fucking disgusting it's absolutely crazy Um, and then it's just this slowly they're slipping more into absolute madness but I think we need to take a break here okay yeah we'll just say one bit break mm-hmm. so you know yourself the I've had a beard what five years now and I've went through different products and Joe I'm not really happy with a lot of stuff see like beard oils and all, they never really work on me until I found this company Odenson and just over there you can check out high quality beard trimmers oils uh, face washes everything over there and i use it every day so if you want to use it you the listener with a lovely code over there for you graveyard to save yourself 30 percent off 35 percent off actually so that's graveyard at the checkout for 35 percent off so after all the coffee field episodes somebody finally decided to sponsor us so if you want some seasonal award-winning and specialty coffees for high-quality blends, check out Coffee Bros in the link in the description. So for 10% off, use the code GRAVE10 for some complex taste notes from fragrant and aromatic to bold and rich. And everybody knows I love coffee. Oh, Every episode I have a coffee, I physically cannot function. Somebody's been listening to us out there. Finally. So if you love coffee as much as Dee here, check the links out below you know i wouldn't send you on any bad beans no. so yeah check the link out below for 10 percent off now let's get back into the video Wait, so-, so um yeah basically then we're back into it anna has the scene of that miscarriage in the subway we've covered that not in too much detail because it's quite graphic <laughs> where like yeah. the milk and stuff is coming out and it's yeah, yeah. probably th- these are scenes probably why I got banned dude. yeah it's just like, Fuck, like not actually what a miscarriage is by the way but anyways um, so then Heinrich meets up with Mark in the bar and it looks well until Mark decides to kill Heinrich and make it look like an accident so that's another strange scene I don't even know why he does that yeah, but, what yeah. was the point of meeting up with him? I, I don't even know. Um, and then also just to mention that we do, <laughs> we see like the introduction of like doppelgangers into this as well. And I think it comes from the creature. So Mark is dropping the kid to school and one of the teachers comes out and it's like Anna. This is, yeah, it's a doppelganger. It's Anna. Yeah, different coloured eyes. With different colour eyes. And her name is Helen. And then they start kind of having a little, not an affair, because I don't think they actually sleep together, but they're in bed together. And she's like the complete opposite of what Anna is. She's like very motherly and she's in the house all of a sudden, like cooking dinner and stuff. Like the yeah. film just moves so fast. You can't even tell where you are halfway through the film. Um, but yeah, so she kind of not moves in, but she starts to be like a mother figure for Bob. Thank God, yeah. because somebody needs some mind of child, so I'm not hating it's on almost that. Almost like Mark is just this is the new Anna now. This is the new Anna. Okay. Do you know what so I mean? then he decides to go and set Anna's apartment on fire where the creature was, but the creature's not there anymore, just so yeah. it's not killed. I don't know where the creature is. Is it inside Anna? Mm. Did she give birth to it or have that miscarriage in this? So it was that it? I yeah. don't know. I'm thinking it's inside Anna. <sighs> So the building goes on fire. He heads back home then and Margie, who was Anna's friend, who I couldn't remember the name of, but now I remember. <laughs> she is coming out of the apartment bleeding. She looks like she's been stabbed. I think we put two and two together. Anna's been stabbing her. Like, what the fuck? So, Anna's been boiling out what this the whole fuck? film. 
And uh, the actress got an award for this role. Fair play to because it was absolutely insane. Yeah. And by the way, she plays Helen as well. Like so. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy. So, I don't know. If the second time I watched it, I couldn't remember. <laughs> I was like, wait, is she Helen or is she Anna now? Because yeah. the film was just chaotic. But um, so he drags the body back inside, finishes her off, makes a little plot to get rid of Margie. He's just covering up all the shit that's been going on. I don't even know how. Um. But yeah, so we see another lovely scene of Vanna having sex with the demon, the creature, monster. demon, whatever, which is unnecessary. But <laughs> again, so like weird. it's just so weird. <laughs> um, and then we find um, Heinrich's mom calls. I think she calls Mark. Yeah, and then Mark is like, yeah, more or less. Kaput. He's gone. Can't she kills herself by taking a load of pills. Like and she's like eighty something. People it's are trapped in left wing People are just in left wing center. Um, the next scene then is Mark himself, not his doppelganger. Mark is walking the streets, and his former employees or business associates, or whatever you want to call them, um, is like, "Come on, you need to come back to work." Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "No, absolutely not." And then he goes to Margie's apartment. I don't know why he goes to her apartment, and but the police are there, obviously, because she's dead. And there's a fucking shoot out then, but he manages. To, it's so I don't even know how I'm explaining this, but he manages to get away. Anyways, so he <laughs> Anna he meets back up with Anna, and Anna is talking all this again spiritual crap. I won't even get into it. She losing her fucking losing mind. her mind some way. And then <laughs> yeah, at this stage of the film, she reveals. Mind. Yeah, so then she reveals the creature who's now Mark. Yeah. She, what did she she morph the creature into a new Mark? So Mark is like, nah, he's going to shoot it. But then all of a sudden the police come in and shoot pe- everybody. And you're like, is everybody dying? Everybody looks like they're dying. Mm. It's just fucking crazy. Um, again, you just need to watch it. I cannot tell you how much this film just blows mm. my mind. So Anna has been shot by the police. She is lying on top of Mark bleeding now. She decides to shoot herself and she dies in his arms. And he decides to throw himself down the stairs. <laughs> But his doppelganger gets out. Mm. So, Helen's back at the flowers, Bob. Mother of the year. The doorbell rings. Um, Bob is just traumatised. God love him. I can't even look at him in this film. It's so traumatising. So, Bob, or Helen opens the door. And um, Bob decides to go to the bat and kill himself by drowning himself. Fucking hell. So, yeah. And then... Bob is the gone outside it, this is just a horrible scene but this is more or less the end of the film Mark is doppelganger and Anna's doppelganger are together now so I don't even know how like how does that make sense it doesn't none of it makes sense the child is gone it's just horrific the original Mark and Anna are gone uh, Helen is now left there and Mark's doppelganger is there did it's Anna just make, absolutely bizarre did Anna make two better versions is it like the, yeah like but was the creature Mark then mm. so fucking weird was it like was the creature Mark mm. or was it oh. and who was what so she was possessed by what like was oh, this a demon was this an just, alien as I said there's so many different some um, scenes I'm thinking was Mark possessed there's just so many different theories and like I don't know so many different looks on it so many different theories so many different um, things that you can pull out of it well, but, well I have to admit that you did tell the plot very well I tried my best because genuinely it's such an erratic plot like I could go back and do this video four or five times over and miss out everything yeah, oh, exactly. I've said in this one like and if, add in ten different things I've said in the next one so if, if you made it this far in the podcast and like you heard the time like, you, you still need to go and give it a watch like it's absolutely and then I feel like maybe we can have a discussion somewhere because I mm. definitely didn't cover everything I did not you know no, but, but it's so much it's just so much oh, but I feel if somebody's seen this film and came back and listened to this review they'd be like oh yeah like, do you know what I mean like, yeah so basically possession is a story of divorce um, possession possession reinvention um, relationship murder murder Miscarriage, relationships. Miscarriages, murder, uh, self harm, 
heavy, heavy topics. Suicide, child abuse, child neglect. Like, I can't even rape. There's just like, oh man, it's it's heavy. But please don't let that turn you off it. Go and watch it. See what you think. Please give it a chance because it's it deserves a chance. I feel like, you know that film, Shorter Island? It's not the same thing at all. But do you know that film, Shorter Island? Oh, yes. Yeah. Leonardo Cabio. Yeah. Yeah. You know the way you have to watch that like multiple times, or maybe that was just me that had to watch that multiple times. No, no, I, this I, I is agree. one of those that you have to watch maybe I two agree. or three times. I think I'm I, probably gonna go back and watch it again and be like, shit, I should have said. Definitely. After you get, like giving me the there's a hundred more things I'm gonna, yeah, it yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, so look. it's heavy, it's dark, it's interesting, it's thought provoking, it's recommendable. It's gory. It's gory. gory. Parts, so it's body like horror, horror, yes. Body, body horror as well. Body horror there. So the um, horror fans will like a bit of that now. Do you know? Yeah. The dialogue. Oh, it's bit, just, dialogue was dialogue. wonky. Okay, oh, so I, the bads. Another way you like to say uh, goods and bads. Is that mm-hmm. what you like to say? Yeah, so the bads as such will be the dialogue definitely lets it down at times because sometimes the dialogue is not strong enough for what's happening because you're like yeah. somebody say something that makes fucking sense yeah somebody back, back this scene up, somebody like, have a like. yeah like say some I don't know you know 100% agree agree um, but it, it didn't let it didn't get the film down too it much doesn't let the film down too much other things I'm hating on would be the the plot is not fluid and I get why because the film is just the way it is and that's it and I technically I wouldn't really change anything but it's not fluid and it's very hard to follow and it's very hard to describe as well like I don't know if you try to give this a shot uh, trying to set it out in an orderly fashion mm. it's mind boggling yeah, it's choppy at parts it's as well it's choppy it's you know um, it moves very quickly from one scene you're trying to digest what you've just seen and then the next somebody else is dead and you're like mm. hold on a second here and, the, the and then the end of when the two doppelgangers are there and the ending I don't get that yeah like <laughs> Wait, what's that mean? The, the start of the film there's a lot of long scenes of somebody in the comments and- let us know like what, is the, what was the true meaning to this film because I'm struggling to see what I know it's about relationships and I think that's the point of it like you know and divorce and yeah probably like and there's a strong message through this yeah. film I agree I agree of East Berlin West Berlin you know the fallout of the war mm. the tensions the economy like you know all that stuff there's so much in it well I have to admit but, um, that was a good pick the goods obviously everything else I've said the acting is phenomenal from both although I said the dialogue was a little bit scrappy but the acting is absolutely phenomenal you um, couldn't have gotten if it wasn't played by these two actors this film was not watchable and the the fellow who played Mark is Sam Neill and he played Damien in one of the Damien he plays Damien in the, the Omen 3 I think it is yeah. and he's like yes very very good he has to be honest not evil. comparable though not comparable to this role here that he's playing oh no it's no. just I cannot recommend enough 10 out of 10 for me great Sorry, job 5 out of 5 isn't it yeah we're doing 5 out of 5, five, five, yeah. out of five. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 ok so, do you want to expand I think I've taken the reins here so no no I appreciate that you were great today hosting uh, no I enjoyed it yeah me bad just like you said like the dialogue was a little bit again hard to basic. follow isn't it yeah it was, but the, it was basic and you're times. just waiting for somebody to like take charge of the scene the yeah. scenes feel a bit like oh my god like there's so much mm. you know um, but, but for the time of it 80s as well like so oh yeah you know. it's a proper standout one I, like I'd put this with yeah. the extras and all now it's like it has that quality to it I'm pity. glad you do because this is one of my favourites yeah you've good taste Thank don't you. let anyone tell you you don't do you know what I mean like, don't let anybody tell you otherwise season 2 of the Graveyard Club and me and Dee are just trying to bang us so far mm-hmm, aren't we mm-hmm. I think so yeah I think Air Niche is Cult films, alternative maybe. horrors not alternative because it's not alternative yeah. well Culty I don't know kind of oh, different that. types of horror not the mainstream whatever's on Netflix this week you know and not that I'm hating on the likes of oh what's on mm. telly like I clicked on and there was a tree insidious films one after the other today not hating on it 20 Halloweens 20 Halloweens if I see Halloween Resurrection again I'll tell you I'm gonna scream but anyways <laughs> it's something different a little bit of a niche so let um, me just let me cook and let think on the next one we watched uh, Apartment 7A last night will we will we save that for a review or do you want to do a little quick one here like yes no, or no I think, no, yes or do no. not even talk about Anna L. Seriously, it's about possession though no yeah true true well my rating is 4.5 out of 5 put this one on, on we'll the give top a, shelf we'll, for me um, this is a classic Halloween hot list add it to we're getting closer to Halloween so there's an excuse to watch it 
Um, but yeah, if you can, go watch it and let me know. Newbie reviews are coming every single week on the Grey Bear Club. Uh, so make sure you're over here. And if you like the obscure kind of stranger picks that we've been picking so far, we'll keep it up. If you don't, let us know. Yep. But yeah. If you're listening on Spotify, you can leave a rating over there. I think we're, we're just there at 50 ratings. So oh, no that helps us out a lot over there. Keep us going. And if YouTube, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Again, let us know if you're feeling it. If these films are a bit too much. <laughs> no, no, don't me. And I think I might have a new idea for the Patreon. I'll tell you on the next day. Uh, okay, you cook on that, and then we cook on the next one. Yeah. Let's go. See you on the next one. Ciao. Look. I am Dracula. Have you ever watched the news and wished that you could see something more positive or looked online and saw all the aggravation and anger and hatred out there and thought to yourself, why can't I just see more positive things in my life? Hi, I'm Mike Rathbun and I'm the host of the Kindness Matters podcast. Every week, we promise to bring you stories that will uplift you and motivate you and inspire you to see the kindness and be the kindness that this world needs more of. Tune in, the Kindness Matters podcast with me, your host, Mike Rathbun.